Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video, and today we're going to be looking at the 2022 House election, this is going to be my first video on the topic, and what the Republican Party can do to win back the House, I'm going to be, for this video, acting like a Republican strategist, um, so just seeing what the Republican Party can do, where they can ga make gains, and the reason I'm doing this from the Republican Party first is because I think that they are, A, they're the favorites to win the House right now, for sure. Can the Democrats still win the House in 2022? Yeah, but I think the Republicans are favored. B, I think that the GOP will, I think it's more important to look at their perspective for the House because it's the party out of power. So, with that being said, I think we should get right into it. We're going to start uh, from um, uh, Washington and make way over to Maine eventually. But Washington, I think, is going to kind of be at a standstill for right now. I mean, when when you look at the House results from Washington, it, Washington really didn't really have anything interesting. I mean, the, the, the one semi-competitive district was actually the 8th district with Ward Kim Schreer won by around 4%, but that was actually a pretty weak performance for her. She usually would have, she would have, I think I had her winning by double digits. So that's probably like, you know, the Republican Party stealing there. They, they had a decent performance in the 1st district with Susan Del Baney. Uh, uh, they almost made that district um, less than a safe margin, but still not still not anything interesting going on there. Then there's also Jamie Herr of Butler's district, which is which was a 13 point Republican district that you know in a blue wave could maybe flip, but you know for right now I'm just gonna see that Washington's gonna stay the same, especially since it's not gaining electoral vote and since the Democrats I think have control of redistrict. No, it's it's a commission actually, so yeah. Now, going over to the state of Oregon, I think we should just take a look at Oregon really quickly because there are a few interesting th things going on in Oregon. Yeah, so the Oregon State Legislature actually does draw the uh, the uh, districts. I actually just had to Google that really quickly to make sure that I wasn't providing any false information. But essentially, it, Oregon's interesting because this is a state that's controlled by Democrats, but the Republicans are more than likely going to gain a seat here. So Oregon's gaining electoral vote, which means it's gaining a congressional seat. So that'll go from having, uh, I, I think, five seats to, yeah, there are five seats here, to six seats. So right now, the Republicans hold this seat, which was uh, Greg Walden's district until he retired. I, I don't know who holds it now, but it's definitely a Republican. Um, and the Republicans actually end up gaining another seat somewhere. And I think the Democrats are more than likely, you know, if they have to draw out an incumbent, which they're not going to, they're all, all four of their incumbents are probably going to stay. But if they did, it would probably be Peter, uh, be, um, not Peter DeFazio. It would probably be uh, Kurt Schrader in uh, this district. He, re he represents this district. I think this is the fourth district of Oregon. Uh, but I don't think he's going to, but I'll just put it as red because the Republicans are probably going to gain uh, these seats here. Or, or they're going to hold this. Actually, I'm just going to say they're going to gain this one seat in Oregon, meaning that it'll go from a four to one Democrat composition to a four to two Democrat composition. Now, in California, they're going to be gaining, or California's going to be losing a seat. I think the composition is probably going to stay similar. The Republicans might just, you know, I'll, I'll just put it right here because this is, I think, the largest district by land by land size, I believe. Um, you know, I the Republicans might net a seat out of California or two, maybe two. But I'm just, but for now, I'm I'm really iffy on that. I really should know more about this because I'm from California. But there's so many congressional districts here, and you know, it's really unpredictable because California does actually have a have an independent commission, um, as you can see here. So yeah. Now, going over Alaska and Hawaii, for obvious reasons, aren't going to be changing anything much. Or Arizona is actually surprisingly not gaining a district, which was, it was expected that they gain a district. They're probably not going to. The Republicans, though, I I think Arizona actually does have an independent commission as well. The Republicans could gain control of, you know, maybe maybe they draw out Tom O'Halloran, but for now, I, I don't think that's, that, that, that that's entirely likely. So, so I'm going to put this in the lean column, meaning that it's possible it happens, but I wouldn't bet on it the way I would bet on, you know, them gaining seats in Oregon, netting seats in California. Uh, now, Montana is another one where this is a gain, certainly, that's going to happen for the short term. So short term, Montana getting, a, getting one more uh, con congressional district is good news for the Republican Party. Because they're probably going to draw it, like I made a prediction on Twitter, they're probably going to draw a district that's like R plus 20, and then one that's maybe R plus 10 or 15. So, and just so you know, that's just, it's, it's, Dave's redistricting had it as like R plus 14, it's probably going to be something like R plus 8 or 9. So we're probably going to see, I'd bet on 2022 House elections, there'd probably be a safe Republican district and a district that the Republicans win just under 10%. So short term, that's great for Republicans to get a new seat in Congress, but long term, especially when you have like Montana as a whole trending red, you have areas of the state like Bozeman, Butte, Missoula, Billings, they're all trending to the left. Uh, 
And that's eventually the Republicans are going to be forced to draw a Democratic congressional district, whether that be in 10 years, 20 years, I'm not sure. But long term, Montana is trending to the left. And I think that, you know, for right now, the Republicans can celebrate with getting that congressional district, but it's not going to help them out in the long term. So just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, Utah, they have all the seats there. Colorado, they're actually probably going to lose the congressional district. The current, uh, or actually, no, they're going to, uh, the Democrats are going to gain one in Colorado, just to briefly say. So right now, Colorado has seven seats. I think they they got, yeah, they gained one. So right now, Colorado has seven seats. Four are Democratic-held seats. Three are Republicans. The Democrats are probably going to just draw themselves a new seat for obvious reasons. Uh, New Mexico, they're probably going to stay the same. Now, Texas is, is interesting. Texas is only gaining two. They're, they're originally projected to gain three, but they only gained two, which I find to be very, very interesting. But right now in Texas, the composition, I think, Texas is the Republicans have, like, eight more seats than Democrats. Like, like I'm just going to check to make sure that I'm not uh, messing up here. But, uh, okay, so it turns out that the, uh, that the uh, it's, it's actually more th- than I thought. The, the, the Republicans actually hold, right now they hold 23 of Texas's 36 districts. So Texas is going to have 38 Um come 2022 so i think you know i i i think that those two new seats could be split but for now i'm gonna say the tech the texas just i'll, I'll just uh, make this easy to see i'll just say they're probably gonna gain a seat in texas now this is actually obviously a republican held seat but just to put, point that out so i think they're gonna net one seat in texas they're, they're they're gonna draw out a few incumbents but the democrats are gonna end up potentially winning a few seats that the republicans expect to win uh in the rio grande valley uh, so just for that reason, I think that the, that the Republicans are going to gain only one seat in Texas. It could be two, I was going to say, maybe two, maybe even three, but one, one seat they're, that they're likely going to gain, two more that they could potentially gain. Now, in Nebraska's second district, I'm really not sure how this is going to go. I think that this is drawn by, like, the state legislature, but the Nebraska state legislature is nonpartisan, but it's still controlled by Republicans, so... It's probably going to be, uh, this district's probably going to be a gain for the Republicans, or at least they're going to draw it to be more favorable to them. Because right now, y- you can actually make an argument that despite this being drawn by Republicans, that this is actually a Democratic gerrymander, because it's essentially just packing Omaha into one district, which doesn't really not, it doesn't really represent the, the partisanship of the state. I think it's a pretty fair district. Other people might disagree. So I think this, that, that either way, the Republican Party is going to have to, you know, kind of draw this to crack Omaha into, into two districts, maybe making this other, uh, this a uh, third district, a little, uh, I think this is the third, uh, it could be the first, but this district right here, they could make it, you know, it's, it's it's like an R plus 20 district right now, how much did they win it by? They probably won it by like 20 or something. Yeah, they won it by 22, maybe like two, maybe like an R plus 15 district, then turn this into like a D plus five or so, to, well, Biden won it by seven, but it adds up to like D plus four or five, to maybe like an R plus five or six district, so, and then keeping this district safe. Uh, of course, the Democrats could win this district in the future, especially as Nebraska turns to the left, but I still think that for the short term, the Republicans are going to pick up this one. As with Sharice David in Kansas, she's gone in 2022. I mean, the like, you, you can look at who's drawing the lines in Kansas. It's the state legislature, and they and like so, some Republican in the state legislature literally said that, that they're going to draw the lines to be extreme gerrymanders. So, and you know, like I've seen maps on Twitter where like, you can make every district at least Trump plus 20. So... Sharice Davids, unless she, you know, she'll probably run for re-election, but she'll run in a much more Republican district, and she'll need like a ten to fifteen point under ten to fifteen point out performance to hold on to her seat. Um, and then Cindy Acton in Iowa, she's probably gone too. I mean, this I was actually their their current map's actually pretty fair. It's it's drawn by a state legislature plus an advisory commission, which basically means they're going to be re- Republicans ed- egging on the Republican-controlled state legislature to draw these districts, which. Kind of tells me that Cindy Axie is gone. I mean, she might run in a competitive district that's only like R plus six or seven, and she could act, and she did overperform Biden, so she could make you know only R plus one or two. But it's still going to be a district that's going to be more favorable to the Republicans than it is now. Now Minnesota, they barely kept all eight of their districts. Um, I mean, it, it, it it's going to be redrawn, but the current composition, I think the Republicans had a pick up. They beat Call and Peterson here, but I think the con- the current composition is five to three in favor of the democratic party if i go check i'm just going to make sure oh it's actually four to four i did oh yeah it was five to three before it's actually four to four now so minnesota i think that the democrats you know speaking of, in minnesota i think it's an independent commission i believe oh no it's from the state legislature but uh the, the map's probably going to be five to I, i'm not sure now it's interesting because the democrats have control of the state supreme court this uh, the governorship as well 
as the uh, state house representatives, but they I think they have like narrowly lost control of the state senate. I'm not sure though. So I think that that it's the Democrats shouldn't be losing any seats in Minnesota by any means, but they're still probably going to be gaining or probably not going to be gaining as many as they would have liked if they held control of the state senate of Minnesota. So I think that you know the Democrats could gain a seat here, but the Republicans not uh, too happy about Minnesota right now. But it's pretty minimal compared to what they can do otherwise. Now in Missouri, they're probably going to end up, you know, it, I'm not sure they could, they could easily draw a map where they, where, where they pack the Democrats into one really weird looking district, but I'm not sure if they could make a VRA compliant. And it, it it's also possible that Missouri, you know, when you have a political appointee commission, that it's, you know, more Republican leaning, that they don't want to look, that, that they don't want to appear too biased. So I think Minnesota, Missouri, like, if I could, I'd say maybe in a best case scenario for the GOP, they draw out one, one Democrat, but it, it's just it, very unlikely at this point. So I think Missouri, not going to touch Missouri. Now, Louisiana, the Democrats actually, Louisiana is interesting because the Democrats do not, do not have control of the state Senate, but they, do, but they do have control of the governorship and the Supreme Court, I believe. So the Democrats could actually net one seat in Louisiana, but it's really close. Uh, Alabama and Mississippi are going to stay the same. Florida is interesting because they're going to be gaining a seat. And there are actually a lot of seats the Democrats could lose. They're probably going to keep one northern Democratic seat where they pack Jackson, which they have right now. They pack Jacksonville and uh, Tallahassee into one very Democratic district. That's just just literally a vote sink. I can show you, that, like, it, it, it looks terrible, but it serves its purpose of uh, being very Democratic. Uh, but they're probably going to end up drawing out Charlie Crist, which is probably why he's running for governor. Uh, Stephanie Murphy is, is another one that they could draw out if that's even her district. I think it's her district. That is her district. Uh, but Christ, uh, um, he only won by six, I think. Yeah, he only won by six. So, um, yeah. And then they might draw, they might draw one Miami Democrat, or, 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 but they're probably just going to end up gaining the, a Republican seat somewhere. So I think Charlie Christ and Stephanie Murphy are the only Democrats that should be worried right now about their seats. Now, Val Demings, you know, they could actually try to pack the Democrats into two seats, two very safe seats in Orlando, you know, because right now this is another, like, they have this seat, which is very safe for them. Uh, actually, no, it's, it's not super safe, but it's Darren Soto, potentially, but uh, Val Demings is is the safe um, seat I was talking about. I, I knew one of them was safe, but so, my bad. That This is the safe seat for the Democrats. This is the more competitive Democratic-leaning seat. Soto could get drawn out, but again, maybe, he did, I probably wouldn't bet on it right now. So, I think Florida is, is going to stay that way. Georgia's not gaining a district, but um, Carolyn Bordeaux, she's probably going to get screwed in redistricting. Um because I don't think that she has a majority black district. She might, she might, yeah, because this is her seat. I, I just want to make sure, because she beat, she beat, um, so, so Rob Woodall retired, and then she beat his opponent. So I'm not sure, you know, this is obviously parts of Gwinnett and Fulton, so it could be majority and minority. I'm actually going to check that right now, because that, that's going to depend on what, um, on uh, whether it's majority and minority. Now, if it's majority and minority, they're probably going to draw her out, or, so, excuse me, if it's not majority minority, they can just draw her out by just making a few changes, kind of expanding this district into part of Doug Collins's former district. Um, so, yeah, uh, but, the, you know, people talk about potentially the uh, the Republican Party replacing uh, Sanford Bishop, who, who, who represents the uh, Southern Democra Georgia uh, Democratic District. He won by 20 points this November. The reason that the reason that the district exists is to serve as a vote sink for Democrats in the South because, you know, people think of Atlanta as, as the main vote center for Democrats in Georgia. No, they have they have Savannah, and most notably, they have a lot of areas down here that are um, majority black. This just this district exists for the sole purpose of, of the Republicans packing the Democrats into one majority black district that serves uh, as a kind of compliance for the Voting Rights Act. So, Carolyn Bordeaux, I'm actually going to make sure her district is, via, is uh, majority minority. I'm not sure if it is. I'm just going to check right now. So yeah, it does turn out that her district is majority minority. So in this case, I'm just going to say that that Georgia might not that the Republican Georgia might not gain a seat. But I think that it's potentially you know they kind of just play around with the district till they get um you know add in some more maybe black voters from over here to make this still VRA compliant. But again, this is iffy. I'm not sure. South Carolina, they're probably just going to. So what they're going to do is Joe Cunningham's former district, which was, which was a competitive Republican pickup, they're probably just going to make it more safe by making. Jim Clyburn seat, uh, which is which serves as the um, as the majority black seat in the state to make it comply with the Voting Rights Act. Uh, they're, they're probably going to make it even more safe for the Democratic Party. Is what they're going to do? Tennessee, no, not not, not much going to change in Tennessee. North Carolina is gaining seats, so this is probably going to be 
or a Republican pickup, although I'm not sure who. Um, Kentucky's going to say the same. Illinois, the Democrats will probably actually pick up a few seats in Illinois, so we don't talk about that. Wisconsin is probably going to be an, an incumbent protection map, meaning that uh, since it's kind of divided where you have a Democratic governor but a Republican-controlled state legislature, which is kind of at odds, they're probably just going to end up drawing uh, the districts to make it safer for all the incumbents, meaning that Ron Kine should be safe in 2022, uh, and then Gwen Moore, and then I'm forgetting the name of the, uh, rep- uh, of, the of the representative who represents this district. It's obviously a Democrat. This is just basically Madison and its suburbs, which is this is a very Democratic district. I'm, I'll, I'll show you how Democratic this district is. It's it's really blue. Um, so it's, uh, Mark Pokin's district. So, so probably just going to make these districts safer for the incumbents. Same with the Republicans. You know, Tom Tiffany uh, and. Um, Mike Gallagher. Gallagher actually, his district actually was won by Tammy Baldwin in 20, 2018, so like in a blue wave, it was actually flippable. So probably make his district a little bit more uh, competitive. Um, if, yeah. Uh, or a, a little safer, um, excuse me. Now, th- the one competitive district in Wisconsin is Ron Kine's district. He is a Democrat representative district that Donald Trump won. So I think they're just going to make this, you know, go from like a, basically a D plus two district to like a D plus seven or eight district. But again, Wisconsin's a state where the the political geography is ter- terrible for Democrats, so um, you know it's we could potentially see a situation where Ron Kine does lose in a red wave in twenty twenty two, but don't want to talk about that as of right now. Um, Indiana, the Republicans could pick up a seat, but I'm not not going to talk about that because I don't think it's going to happen. Michigan, they're losing a seat, so a Democrat might get drawn out, but the Republicans wouldn't be necessarily be netting a seat there. Ohio, again, I'm not sure what's really going on in Ohio, I should actually look at, I think it's the state legislature throwing the lines, I don't know, it's actually a political appointee commission, but it should skew Republicans, so right now I think there are three Democratic seats in Ohio, there's one in Columbus, and there are two Cleveland, Toledo-based, wait, there are, okay, I just need to make sure, um, wait a minute, that's more, wait, wait, that can't be right, did I just click on a Republican district, well, let me see, so we've got, um, Tim Ryan's seat, which is a competitive, dis- oh, Anthony Gonzalez, that's who I was, mistaken here we go so yes yeah, so there are um okay so there are actually four democratic seats in ohio but tim ryan's seat is, is pretty competitive i mean this is a very working class uh district that yeah and trump came close to winning in 2020 i believe tim ryan he only won by around seven and a half percent so tim ryan if he runs for percent he, he he could get drawn out or th- or they could make his district just even more competitive than it already is you know but I actually think it'll stay in Democratic hands because it, cause I just think that Trump has two, you know, they might end up drawing a district that Trump would have narrowly carried in 2020, but I think that his working class appeal just can't be matched. So for that reason, I think that Ohio uh, composition is stay the same. So the Rust Belt's actually better for Democrats than I expected. Um, Virginia, not going to change, you know, the, the Republicans. I mean, I don't even know what's going on in Virginia, to be completely honest. I know it's it's, it's Democratic control, but you have the legislature plus an advisory commission, so... Yeah, um, Delaware, obvious for obvious reasons. Nothing. So I think the Republicans are probably going to lose a seat in Maryland, um, especially because the Republican is like I think it's I think it's Andy Harris, right? Is Andy Harris? Yes, Andy Harris. He's actually really disliked by the, the by members of Congress for whatever reason. So I think that he'll probably get drawn out, which is a gain for the Democrats. Um, in Pennsylvania, they're going to be losing a seat, so we we might just kind of see, you know, maybe someone like. Uh, what, um, is it, Matt, I think this is Matt, so, so this is Matt Cartwright's district, right? Uh, it's like Mary Gay Scanlon, yeah, uh, Mary Gay Scanlon was the one I was thinking of, um, yeah, oh no, 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 no she's in the state Democratic district, so I was thinking of, okay, it turns out I was thinking of, 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 a, of Madeline Dean, who might actually run for Senate, people are talking about it, but Connor Lamb's probably run for Senate, so we're gonna see maybe one Republican gain, whether it be Dean or Lamb, Maybe Lamb, because it seems like he's going to run for Senate, so maybe he thinks he's going to get screwed in redistricting. So uh, the Republicans might gain this seat, or they might just, like, or a Democrat, if anything, is just going to lose a seat, because it'll go from 18 seats to 17 seats for Pennsylvania. So we could just see, you know, the composition just, just Democrat subtracts one, or the Republicans stay the same. New Jersey, I think that the Republicans are actually going to gain a district. I, I'm not sure who it's going to be. Uh, could be Mikey Sherrill. Um, I'm not sure, though. I'm just going to put her district because i think it's the, the, the representative that i know the most about um because the because the new jersey redistricting commission actually has a republican lean for whatever reason i i really don't know why um but for whatever reason it does it's yeah so 
that's pretty much it. Um, in New York, they're going to be losing one seat as well. They actually came close to holding all the seats, which is interesting. Um, so, you know, I think the Democrats are probably going to gain a seat in New York um, because this is going to be a, um, a day where the Democrats have uh, most of the control over the process. So New York probably going to lose us. Uh, the, the Republicans are probably going to lose a seat there. New Hampshire, though, I, I think Sununu is going to – I think the Republicans are going to draw – uh, a safe Democratic seat and a safe Republican seat because uh, Ann Pappas or is it Custer? Yeah, Custer and or, sorry, Ann Custer and Chris Pappas. I just shipped them. Uh, Custer and Pappas are, are are unusually strong in that they outperform Democrats in, in both these districts. So they're probably just going to draw out one of them. I don't really know who it's going to be, but they're just going to draw out one of these uh, incumbents in, in in this state. And I think it's going to be Connecticut. They're probably going to gain one just because it's it's, it's going to be drawn by like I think, I think a commission. Um, yeah, a commission that's gonna, you know, it's, I mean, it'll be drawn, it'll be drawn by the state legislature, but I, I think they're gonna be under pressure to give the Republicans a see here, especially because this district's actually more competitive than you'd expect. It's, it's more competitive than most people know about. This was only like D plus 11 or so. So, um, I think that's it. And then Maine, you know, Golden might just, I think the Maine Democrats are gonna, are, are just gonna solidify Golden kind of, um, shore it up there. So I think it's gonna be it. So I think that there are, 20 potential Republican gains. Again, some of these are iffier than others. Like, if you want to take away some of these gains, um, you, you can see there are only 15. But I think for that, I'm just going to continue just fl filling these in. Uh, again, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please seriously uh, do leave a like. Uh, it, it really helped me out. I'm trying to hit 5K by the end of June. Uh, if we could do that, that would be amazing. Um, but I think it's, yeah, I think that'll be it for this video. Uh, thank you, and I'll see you all next one. Goodbye.